According to communication from Wizards of the Coast, it looks like two major Lost Caverns of Ixalan products are going to experience a bit of a delay. But what does that mean for pre-release? And furthermore, what does that mean for the value of these products, both in the short and long term? It's not often we get delayed product news from Wizards of the Coast. Heck, for a company that produces a million freaking magic sets every single year, they do a pretty good job of staying on time with major releases. But when it comes to Lost Caverns of Ixalan, it does look like we will be experiencing a bit of a delay in communications from Wizards of the Coast themselves. It turns out that the Collector Booster Box and Commander Deck Series will undergo some delays, but each product will be delayed a bit differently. When it comes to the Collector Booster Box, we are seeing an actual factual full-fledged delay. They state that the product will not be there for pre-release and the product will be delayed from anywhere from three days to upwards of three weeks, varying by region that the product is in. I am varying from region to region, I think is the best way to probably say that. But when it comes to the commander decks, it's a little more vague, but also seems more promising. It states that we will get limited availability of the commander decks for release and more that will kind of leak out to the community again, region by region up through the official release of November 17th. So those are the details of the delay, but like, what does it all mean? And the scope of magic and the size of our community, it shouldn't be a big deal. We often say, hey, we have too much product on the shelves. We're getting too much. We can't keep up with all of it anyway. Getting a little more time between things might not be all that bad. But in the case of the collector booster box, I actually think this is a much bigger deal than we think. And I want you to kind of follow me on this journey of a, the life cycle of a collector booster box from a standard set release. And we've seen this over and over again. Heck, I'm tracking every single sold listing of sealed product for Ixalan on TCG Player. If you guys make sure you turn into Friday Morning Magic, we're going over Lord of the Rings pre-sales and we got Ixalan sales updated. So we get to kind of look at all that data over a long period of time and see some of these trends. And when it comes to Collector Booster Box, we see something similar happen across almost every single standard set. The Collector boost co Booster Box comes out and listen, we as a community have proven, we like the product, we buy a bunch of it. It always sells extremely well and game stores get to make a nice little margin especially immediately following pre-release and release. But almost every single collector booster box undergoes the same trend. It does seem to kind of tick downward over time in price, losing as much as 20 to 25 percent of its value from its original 220 dollar market price point now with ixalan this is going to be extremely interesting because as this delay is going to vary from region to region and magic in the magic market the magic economy if you will is so globatized and yeah you know what i'm making up the word globatized deal with it if you don't like it let me know in the comment section below but until then i'm sticking with it it's such a global market that we, if we can't get at our local game store or your store that sells down the street, many of us will turn to the secondary market, turn to online retailers and purchase this product. And what that means is by the time a store gets these boxes in hand, they could be missing out on 20% of that revenue, 15% of that revenue, 10 if they get them quickly, because the price of these collector booster boxes often comes down. Now, it might not be the case. These boxes often come down in price due to, well, mainly the demand and supply. We get a ton of collector boosters. Collector boosters often are anything but collectible as there are so many of them out there in, on the open market. So because of this, if it is a collector booster that we take to, that the community enjoys and we like to revisit and we like to open, you tell me a story where the product, since it is delayed and kind of leaking out over this course of time, could hold a better price point. But if a lot of product hits, enough to satisfy our community to a point, or we maybe just don't take to the box as much, you could tell me a story in the future where by the time a store gets their boxes in hand, they're already on the secondary market for $198. They're already on the secondary market for $195, 94, and so on and so forth. This to me is the big deal about this delay. When you deal with a product like Magic the Gathering and our little beautiful ecosystem that we've created where Magic gives to Distro, which gives to Game Stores, which then comes to us, and the margins for everybody across the board who isn't named Wizards of the Coast are so paper thin, 
any disruption in this process can cause big problems, right? We can see massive swings and the little bit of money to be made on some of these products kind of fly out the window. Now, I'm not saying that's going to be the case. Again, we deal in a situation where as the product is leaked out, if the availability truly is limited, the price of this product could hold unlike a collector box that we have seen before. But I have a tinfoil hat theory on this. I've got some speculation. I've got some conspiracy theories that I got to get out in this video. But before I get there, you got to click the sub button. We're racing to 7K. And if I say this conspiracy theory and you're not subbed, we might have to argue a lot because this one is going to get... Uh, this one's in the weeds a little bit. So again, click that sub button, race, uh, help us race to 7K. 7K by the end of the day, even though it's not going to happen, it's just a really fun phrase to say. But let's imagine a world where Wizards of the Coast has been experimenting over the last year at least to try to get us to keep revisiting sets. And we've shown as a community, hey, a set comes out, we buy it, we like it, and then we kind of forget about it. And the rapid release cycle takes over and we're on to the next thing. Well, Wizards has been trying to get us in the past, in the recent past, to revisit sets. The Complete Bundle was a way to keep us thinking about Phyrexia All Will Be One and keep us engaged with the product, and frankly, it worked. The Complete Bundle was a great product. March of the Machine Aftermath had unique cards in the set, but it was based off the March of the Machine story, kind of kept us in that universe and gave us a taste of what, you know, storytelling could be if Wizards of the Coast cared about their own IP and their own storytelling, which I know everyone's opinion on that. I know that we say that they don't, but like, just stick with me. It tried to get us to re-engage with March of the Machine and keep us in that universe. And Lord of the Rings, the set that is dropping now, which by the way, it does seem like it's selling a little bit better. It's Friday Morning Magic, we're going to go over all the pre-sale data, but the Lord of the Rings holiday release is keeping us involved in Lord of the Rings. What if what if the delay was intentional? What if they're intentionally delaying collector boxes? We just did a video on this channel. I'll link it if I remember that there's a massive gap following Ixalan. There's like, oh my God, there's 58 days or something with no major set releases. We'll get secret layers. We'll get small things like that, but there's no fresh major set release in 58 days, which for magic is mind boggling. But what if, what if they just delayed the collector booster? Cause they're like, eh, we need to stem the bleeding a little bit. We need to see more consistent revenue. Let's, let's slow this down. And furthermore, what if this is the future? We go down to the play booster box, one product, one play booster box on release. And then three weeks after release, we get the collector booster. All the cards that you've had three weeks to fall in love with in special treatments, serialized, going crazy. What if this is the magical future? And they're like, oh no, trust me, it's production issues. Ah, uh, we didn't mean it. We're gonna delay a little bit. And they're just kind of testing to see how that goes. I that could be hilarious. And jokes aside and funny conspiracy theories aside, it would be interesting to see every set release come with something that, you know, came out later and tried to keep us engaged and tried to keep us involved. But with Magic's release cycle and everything coming so fast and furiously, I just don't know how they could feasibly make that happen. There's just, there's not enough space in that window for them to do that. So I just think stuff like that could be really fun. Do you think there's a deep conspiracy when it comes to this Ixalan delay? Do you think it's going to affect our community or your or my local game store? And heck, remember, if you don't have a local game store to pick up this product, you can go to minmaxgames.com. They're my local game store and they support this channel. They're big for the player game store. And that just, that makes me happy. I'm really happy to work with them. So make sure if you don't have a place to buy magic, you check that out before you check Amazon or something like that. And until next time, you guys know me. My name is Josh. Make sure you sub, share the video, help the community grow and all that fun stuff. And you know, oh, channel membership, five bucks. It's, listen, it's pretty cool. All right, we'll see you around. Goodbye.